actually. Did you just fart? No way, wasn't me. Well, it wasn't me, and there's only two of us here, so... I'm gonna go look for clues. Detective Mini Crawler is on the case. Well, good luck with that. Oh, hey, I found some clues. Oh, oh, it stinks. What the heck's in here? I found those in the cat's litter box. Oh, get it out of here. I'm going to go look for more clues. Speaking of looking for clues, that's what today's video is about. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm good at what I do. I just might be the best there is, actually. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, aren't I? My name is Evan Miles. I'm a crime scene analyst. Maybe that's oversimplifying things a bit. Whether it's crime scene photography, forensics, or analysis, I do it all. It might be cliche to tell you that I've been passionate about this type of work since a very early age, but I wouldn't say it if it wasn't factual. Facts, after all, are what I do. When I was nine years old, I was running down the sidewalk one hot summer afternoon, chasing after the ice cream truck that drove through the cul-de-sac at almost exactly the same time each day of the summer. The driver of the ice cream truck was Franklin Boyd, 31 years old, 5 feet 7 inches, 167 pounds, chestnut hair, hazel eyes. He lived at 1441 Danvers Court. He was also left-handed. This is another talent of mine. Eidetic memory. On this particular day, I noticed the brake lights on the ice cream truck weren't operating properly. Given that these vehicles always move at a low speed, this really wouldn't be much cause for concern. That is, of course, assuming that anyone following behind the truck was observing their space cushion. But assumptions are dangerous. They can even be fatal. The truck stopped short for some children who were racing towards it, money in hand to purchase a cold treat to soothe the sweltering day. Unfortunately, the van following behind the ice cream truck hadn't noticed the faulty brake lights. The driver also wasn't observing the speed limit, the seatbelt law, or the mandatory two-second space cushion. In a flash, the van slammed into the rear of the ice cream truck, crumpling the rear doors like a soda pop can. The van driver was ejected through the windshield and slammed face first into what was left of the ice cream truck doors. The shower of crimson covered glass shards rained onto the street like a bloody kaleidoscope. The van driver was Tristan Moore, 46 years old, six feet four inches, 185 pounds brown hair and eyes, extremely nearsighted, and now recently deceased. The screams were loud at first, and as I approached the scene of the accident, they seemed to trail off. It was like I couldn't hear them anymore. Time stood still for me as my eyes scanned the brutal sight before me. I felt strangely calm as I pulled my small notebook from my pocket the one I had kept for drawing, and I sketched everything that my eyes took in. When I was finished, I had a perfect diagram of the accident sketched in my notebook. It was even to scale. So yes, this really was something that captivated me from very early on. But today isn't the scene of an accident. It's a serial killer. Now let me explain what's in front of me right now. I'm going to give you facts, and the facts will not be very pleasant. Two victims, one male and one female. The male, Daniel Kurtz, 41 years old, five feet, 10 inches, 162 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes, gray blazer with the third button missing, 
black dress slacks, black dress shoes, ligature marks around the neck. Cause of death was strangulation. Drag marks on the cement as well as scuffing on the shoes indicate that the victim was dragged into this position. Abrasions on the hands suggest that this was done post-mortem. The female, Rebecca Kurtz, wife of the deceased male, 40 years old, 5 feet 2 inches, 115 pounds, red hair, green eyes, blue sundress with matching sandals, large puncture wound to the center of the chest. Small cuts on forearms suggest defensive wounds, most likely from a knife. The length of the stab wound suggests a blade greater than 6 inches in length. Dried blood on her dress and the lack of any blood around the body indicates that the murder took place somewhere else, and the body was placed here post-mortem. The location is a construction site for a new apartment building. I am currently in the basement. The cement foundation is very fresh, perhaps only a week old. I'm just going to snap a few photos. Something doesn't feel right here. This crime scene is very clean, almost immaculate. But it's not the work of the serial killer the police have been tracking. This is the work of a copycat. I noticed it when I took a photo of the woman's face. It was her eyes. They didn't look natural on the LCD. She's wearing colored contacts. Her eyes aren't green. That's disappointing. He almost had me fooled. This feels like such a waste of time. This isn't a crime scene. This is a mockery. There's no art. This copycat is going to make another mistake. And we're going to take him down. No. I have no intentions of finding the real killer. Why would I want to? He leaves me such wonderful sights to see. That's all for today's video. Mini crawler night. Mini crawler? Oh hey, I found some more clues. This isn't from the cat's litter box again, is it? Absolutely not. I found that stuff in the toilet. By the way, I unclogged the toilet. I'm going to look for more clues. Wasn't me.